Welcome to Opalest TV. I'm really excited to have Enric Vlad and Laura Liz Vlad coming from Florida visiting me here in Germany for this video. Together, they have done due diligence on thousands of managers allocated to many hundreds of hedge funds and built over 50 specialist funds themselves, many of these focused on emerging managers. So today we have this industry power duo with me in Germany and we're going to talk about the major factors that emerging managers must focus on to build and develop really successful businesses that can stand the test of time. So I wonder, let's start with why have you started this business? Why are you engaging with managers this way? Given that 88% of all current AUM is being managed by fewer than 700 managers who are part of the billion dollar club. Basically means that 12% of, of all assets are being managed by the remainder 12 to 15,000 managers. And if you think about it, the managers that we've interacted with over our career are incredibly smart, dynamic, and true experts running really great businesses but they're getting such a small portion of the AUM being allocated mm -hmm. and they're fighting over it with 15,000 other managers in the same space. But it's actually gotten a lot worse in the last few years. I think this statistic is 96 cents of every dollar raised in the last five years went to the five billion dollar plus managers. So basically four cents on every dollar is what the majority of managers are fighting for. And but that's divided by like 12,000 funds. Yeah, or more. So, you know, just like the rich are getting richer, the big are getting bigger, the small are struggling more and more. And I think that is the fundamental reason why we got into this industry, to answer your question. As allocators, being on the receiving end of so many wonderfully talented managers who've come to see us to pitch their investment products. We've seen so many of them that have just failed, even though they're some of the smartest people that we know. Actually, over 2,000 managers over the last two years have closed their door, and far fewer have mm -hmm. opened their doors. So you know, we're just constantly seeing mm -hmm. this attrition in the industry, especially over the last couple yeah. of years, where managers are really struggling for a multitude of reasons to get over a $100 million mark and the lion's share of all allocations are going to the really super large managers. We found that, that you know, we can really help these people if, because not only have we built so many of our own funds and our own businesses and portfolios and been at the receiving side of so many investor proposals and there are so many managers where we can see, you know what, this manager is really going to make it and we know why. And there are so many other situations where you have these talented managers who have great performance but we couldn't allocate to them because we know that they are not going to raise the sufficient assets in order to get to a critical size. So after a while, we started helping managers piece by piece. I mean, Loa Louise was really one of the only institutional allocators that I know that would actually take the manager aside and say, look, you have not passed our due diligence, but here are the three reasons why. You need to fix that, you need to fix that, you need to fix that. And in the process, some of those managers actually would come back to us, you know, a year later and say, hey, I fixed this. Can you take another look at us? Well, again, just meeting a lot of incredibly talented people who were actually great working inside their business. Mm -hmm. In other words, running great funds, but actually not running a great business. They weren't working on their business. They were working mm -hmm. in their business. And in a sense, being the best kept secret, you know, in the alternative mm -hmm. investment world. So this really started us thinking, because we did so much in the emerging manager space, that there was a real opportunity for elevating these managers so that they had a better platform, so that they could be better distinguished for their exceptional abilities. And I think in conclusion, Matthias, the fundamental reason that brought us here is that we really love the industry. We, we, we love so many of these managers and we hate to see them struggle. And 
it's almost a David and Goliath type thing. We, right. so many guys, they're just missing one or two ingredients that would make them great, that would make them successful. But they're so focused on their portfolios that they missed so many other great elements of, of their business. I mean, you and I talk about this all the time and we really wanted to help. So eventually we decided, let us structure a more formal, comprehensive way that we could help these managers. And that was really the origin behind Global Fund Advisors. And that's why we launched the business. And, and frankly, I mean, we were doing this kind of thing with managers in many of our portfolios mm -hmm. prior to, you know, launching this side of our business. Uh, and it was very encouraging and it was very inspirational because you saw great managers able to make tweaks to their business that catapulted them mm -hmm. to the next level. And that is a really wonderful thing to see, especially when you have great, talented people working really hard that are really honest and really skilled. And additionally, being able to show that to investors who otherwise wouldn't be able to touch them because they didn't meet the criteria mm -hmm. and weren't doing those things that got them over the threshold of being investable. We've been in the position several times where we'd have a manager that fulfills a great position in one of our mm -hmm. portfolios. And we would say to each other, oh, I wish these guys were bigger so we could give them yeah. more money. Because there are some managers that deliver so much alpha under certain market conditions that you really, your portfolio needs them. And if they're not there, I think the investors are losing. And I think it's a loss to the industry. And I think it's obviously a loss to the manager and the service providers. And I think you've, I mean, you, you with your business has done such a great job of bringing smaller managers to the forefront of the investor community. But we just wanted to help a lot of these managers because if they could be bigger, they could be more successful, but we could also give them more money. And that was one of our motivators of helping managers too, besides just trying to see good people survive and, and prosper. I also think years ago, you could have a very talented manager come out of the box and launch with $100 million. And the mm -hmm. process was a lot easier. And it was a lot, the barriers of entry were a lot lower as well. So today, when somebody comes, they usually have to have a three-year track record and get through these different benchmarks that didn't exist years ago. So if you can give somebody that added extra mm -hmm. advantage by some skills, some procedures, some protocols that'll get them in front of the right type of allocator, get their message across, get their identity across, and have the allocator understand why they're unique and why they actually solve a problem in their portfolio, then that's a win-win for everybody. So I wonder, can you give us more details about the typical shortcomings and pain points that mm -hmm. you see in your work with emerging managers? The fact is that 89% of all funds fail to reach $100 million. But that's because they don't really know what business they're in. They, they start day one off with being in a B2B type business. So they're an institutional player, but they don't know what actual business they're in. Are they in a B2 fund of funds? Are they in a B2 endowment? Are they in a B2 consultant type business? Those are all very different approaches that require very different solutions to it. You know, for example, you have a manager that's running $75 million and they take their resources, their people, mm -hmm. their time, their effort, and they place it into putting on these great marketing, you know, campaigns, but they're marketing to people who have 10 billion in assets mm -hmm. who can only make a $200 million allocation of which the manager, they can never be more than 10% of the manager. Well, so they're barking up the wrong tree. Well, in fact, if, if you think of it, only 3.7% of all managers, you know, reach a billion dollars in AUM. And I think that is a major problem, but not all of these problems apply to all managers. It's always a combination, a different combination of different, different things. And one of the other key pain points that we found is that managers forget that people buy people and that businesses are run by people that you you don't sell to an institution you're actually selling to a person and very much more so important if you're selling into the family office market in that 
93% of all small, small funds, those are funds under 100 million, fail in the first five years. I mean, that is a shocking statistic. Just think about 93% of all funds fail in the first five years because they're missing 65% of the sales process. And 65% of the sales process is made up of, number one, building a real identity and a vision that you can be proud of, that you can communicate, creating rapport with your clients, presenting yourself as the solution to their problems. Most managers start after that point and start talking yeah. about performance, oh, right? Most of the time you'll go into a meeting and they'll hand you a pitch book and the tear sheet for their performance and we really don't know mm -hmm. anything about them. We don't understand what their expertise is, what they're trying to achieve, how they're going to mm -hmm. help us, what problem they're solving in our world. Mm -hmm. And so you start by, oh, do you want to buy us? And that's kind of the last step after you've added tremendous value to mm -hmm. the client, to the allocator, to the buyer. At the end of the day, everybody wants to know what value am I getting from this allocation. I think you said it very well when you said that they're not focused on a consultative selling process. They're turning up mm -hmm. as sellers. They're basically just saying, it's like people who hit you on LinkedIn and say, hey, buy my stuff. It doesn't work that way, right? So then the third most frequent pain point that we see is that managers are spending so much of their time and energy and resources, number one, barking up the wrong tree with an incoherent message. But more importantly, they have not automated their sales process into a disciplined, scalable process that can run at night, especially, you know, using social media properly, using LinkedIn, using proper messaging applications. And most of the managers we, we've noted, we've, we've come across, they're not even using media properly like video. I mean, a, if you think of it, a picture says a thousand words, right? Well, a video can can sell a thousand pictures in a couple of minutes. So they're they're missing that boat completely. Obviously, that excludes managers who have already come to see you and, <laughs> and that are uh, meeting with you. Well, a manager don't have a replicatable process, so they walk into every meeting as if it's something brand new. And if they do have a replicatable process, it's usually them hiring a marketer. And a lot of managers, in fact, I would say the majority of managers think, let me hire an incredible Cracker Jack marketer who's going to make the difference in my business. And that's a wonderful thing to have. I'm not underestimating the value of a great marketer. However, if you haven't, if you're the leader of your ship, you know, you're the captain, it's your job to develop, you know, where you're going, set the compass, what kind of, you know, strategy you have what problem you're solving through your portfolio, who you're targeting, it's instead of turning it over to somebody who can't possibly know why you created your business, what you created your business to be, and, and the target client for your business. And accretively, what you're adding to anybody who buys your, your product. And I think the, the, the last one of the key pain points that we see is that people are not focused on trust. Trust is the number one universal currency that runs everything. It is all around you. And many people have it, but they're not focused on actually making it better. Because trust is the one thing that changes absolutely everything. Think of it just during the due diligence process. So many managers that we've worked with, we've had to literally teach them how to do due diligence and how to present it properly. But if you go with that model of trust but verify and you say here is our process and you have built a proper process that an institution needs to see in order to trust you, well then you can actually tick those boxes along the way whilst earning the, the investor's trust at the time. And if I were to add one more thing, it would be that there is no business plan in place, as you know with regulation, with compliance, with all of the operational costs of setting up a business and growing a business, you need to have a game plan and you need to stay on target mm -hmm. in how you're building that business appropriately from a time perspective, from a cost perspective, from an employee perspective. You have to have a trajectory for your growth in a multitude of areas that you're benchmarking and holding yourself mm -hmm. accountable for. And very few people, they might have a thought process about it, but very few people have actually Actually written a business plan and what they are going to achieve and it is well documented and known that human beings who actually have a plan document it and measure it on a regular basis achieve a lot more 
And I think that's one of the things that we spend a great deal of time with when we're working with managers to make sure that they're hitting their benchmarks, to make sure that they're bringing their business, not their portfolio, but taking their business to the next level in the increments in which they set up for themselves and adjusting their course because things do change in the financial environment on a regular basis. You know, I remember when the word black swan came out and I affectionately laugh about it now and call the black swan the domesticated household pet because there's been so many black swans in my career. But you can't plan for everything, but you can have a plan that you can adjust so that you stay on target and land on a dime where you're going. And I think that's really important and something that managers must integrate into their business strategy. So tell us in greater detail, how do you actually work with the managers that you're consulting with? How does it look like? Matthias, we have a very straightforward process with our managers. Number one, we have a step-by-step, -step, module-driven coaching program for our managers. That is combined with a world-class support. So we don't just email them a whole lot of stuff and leave them to it. Each session is followed by a workshop where one of or the two of us are taking the manager through the next step, through the next step, through the next step. And then that is combined with performance and mindset coaching. Because very often, you have to actually retrain some of the principles of these businesses who've never actually given it any thought. So we have six modules, right? And each of those modules has six sub-modules. The first one focuses exclusively on identity, vision, getting that right, because until people know who you are, it's very, very difficult to build a bond with them. The second one is focused on their core story and their care, their message of where they're delivering value. We, for example, have a module that is focused on how to become a maven. Right now, I know you're being German. You'll you'll know what this means, but it's a Yiddish word, Maven, to be this trusted expert in the eyes of your client. That is actually some hard work that goes into it. So, to show it in practice, we have a coaching module, and that is followed up by a workshop module, and either in person or by uh, video conferencing. And then, very often, due, in between those modules, the manager will go, "Okay, I have some trouble with this," so they'll they'll reach out to either Laura Louise or or reach out to me or to both of us and say, "Can you help me with this?" And we help them on a step by step process. So everything is module driven. Everything is in a very disciplined process so that we can take them from where they are to their transformation to where they want to get to or where sometimes we believe they should be. Let me just explain a little bit more about the distinction of the maven and why we think it's so important. Because we sit down with people who truly are experts and they have mm -hmm. a genius and they have a portfolio and a system or a thought process that's very unique to them. Yet none of the buyers or allocators really know or for the most part don't actually connect with that part of them that unique persona that expertise that only this manager has mm -hmm. and some of the really wonderful qualities that would make you actually really want to invest and be with that person so articulating those things and getting a manager to say oh you know what i'm okay to to share this with my clients because clients want to connect with that. Mm -hmm. They want a touch point. They want to understand who's managing their money. Mm -hmm. They want to feel like they have a relationship. Mm -hmm. And that maven persona, that maven process that we take them through mm -hmm. and teach them really helps them to get comfortable with mm -hmm. it. Because I think that people do feel uncomfortable going out and telling about themselves, but there is a way to approach and show and have a touch point with your client that makes them feel like they know you, they understand what value you're bringing to the party, and it connects you in a much deeper way. Any of your top of the mind portfolio managers who are running in excess of five billion, we all know who they are, but there's something unique about them. There's something special about them. There's something that's known about them that makes them stand out from the crowd. And I think that it's very important. You aren't that person who stands out in the crowd just because of your AUM. You become the man running that five billion plus portfolio because you stand out in the crowd. So I think it's important to embrace that and your authenticity and your uniqueness in this process. Because when there's 12,000 or 15,000 managers vying for that 4% share of the pie, 
if you stand out, you have a much greater chance of not only getting the money, but being memorable and keeping the money during difficult times. So I think that's a really mm-hmm. critical element of you know what we what we go through with our clients. Well, this makes total sense, and I think this is uh, really fascinating mm-hmm. what you're doing. So I'm curious, can you tell us more about the other modules that you have, or give us mm-hmm. other examples? Sure. Six modules that we have are really broken into six different elements of the business. And some managers don't need all, but we tend to find that they all need the first three modules, which are very much focused on their identity, their vision, the core story that they're presenting, and their sales machine or automating their sales machine, building their sales funnels. But we have a number of other modules that we add in between some of those. Like Laura Louise does an excellent one on time and priority management, for example. I do one on using LinkedIn as a sales tool and truly using it to identify the right target audience. You know, if you think of LinkedIn, it's fantastic. You know, there are 550 million users on LinkedIn and 72% of executives check their LinkedIn every single day. So that is a tremendous tool. People often think of it as social media, but it's not social media. It is a connection tool if you use it correctly. Then, as we already mentioned, the the Maven module is one of our most popular modules. And like that, we go through different stages of the manager's business. But as you know, it's a consultative arrangement. So some managers need more of this, some managers need more of that. So we have a number of tailor-made products too, but all in all, it's really six key modules with six sub-modules. And you know, on the operations and compliance side, we've created a process that's completely replicatable. And you know, we try to tie all of our thesis together because people don't buy, obviously, just one part of your business. They're buying the whole. And trust and integrity is so important, but obviously compliance and operations is critical to any allocator. So when we're preparing a a proper due diligence manual, and one of our modules is taking somebody through a bulletproof due diligence manual, it's really creating something that you're ready to give to your client at any point in time, to that prospect at any time. We really believe that it's important to have total transparency. So you're preparing the absolute complement of due diligence materials and giving it away right away. It's part of the marketing process so that they feel that they have everything. And by the way, give people, give your prospects something before they ask for it. Yeah, well that comes back to that trust but verify principle, right? So you're asking for trust but you have to lead with trust and then give people the tools to verify that trust so that you're earning that trust. And if you as a manager do not have a disciplined, scalable due diligence process, Mm -hmm. guess what? You're going to fall victim to the institution style of asking for due diligence, which means you're going to be busy for the next 18 months answering questions which might or might not lead to an allocation, as you know. So what we do is we try to put together and teach a process that is easy to update every three months or every six months, depending on the size of the business, where it is a ready-to-roll process. We do an entire flow chart of every single aspect of it, so there is no ability for things to fall through the cracks. I find that when dealing with managers, and I've dealt with hundreds of them that I've allocated to, we'll ask for something or in something will be said in a meeting and we'll be expecting it and it doesn't come and it gets lost in the cracks. There's got to be a process where things, the deliverables are coming before they're asked for. That you are so robust in your process that you're the natural answer. That you're constantly giving things of value to that allocator so that when they come time to invest in that strategy or something that you're an expert in, you're the first person they think about. I think that's very important. So I think this is fascinating. I think the work you're doing is really super important, mm-hmm. right? And it can make a difference. Mm-hmm. So I wonder, how can we work together to help in making emerging managers more successful? Well, first of all, Matthias, thank you very much for this opportunity. But I'd also like to, at this point, thank you not only for the invitation here, but to thank you what you've been doing for the industry because for a long time you have been this champion of emerging managers. You have brought so many hundreds of 
managers to the forefront of the investment community. You're involved in so many roundtables, events, conferences, introducing people to each other, some of the publications that are fantastic. And I, I think you see by your subscriber base that you have a tremendously loyal following. So I thought about this idea and I've discussed it with Laura Louise. We could provide a free of charge consultation to the first 25 managers that come through the Opalesk subscriber base, give them a free consultation and work with them to see how we can help them add some value. And that would be a process where we're really very much looking at just their situation. What are the value that we can bring? What are the challenges that they're having in their business mm -hmm. and some solutions that they could p apply right away? And, and go through it. So it's really will be a one-on-one. -on -one. It won't be anything that's written down or scripted, mm -hmm. but really working one-on-one -on -one with a manager for a consultation mm -hmm. for 25 of your subscribers. And, yeah. we'll, we'll and I can, I can create a link, link for that and then uh, you yeah. could just post that link.